This is my favorite thing about Pokemon. That when you understand the games, that when you understand how things work, and you start getting some crazy results out of it. Or in the case of my fan discord, you stumble into it, have no idea what's going on, think you have something crazy up your sleeve, but then it just has the simplest explanation. So anything that's going on with glitching or cloning or something like that, that's clickbait. That is not what's happening here, and I'm about to explain why. But if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and share with your friends because it is really cool. So, I've already been talking about that when it comes to max raid battles, you can effectively soft reset the Pokemon that you're going for and then only guarantee rare Pokemon encounters. Like, I think this is going to be a purple beam. Yeah. So, there's like a slight delay and stuff, you can change your text speed, and as long as you beat it out before the save, then you can just kind of reset until you get the Pokemon that you're looking for. So we know that about it. However, inside of my guides, people were saying that they were getting mixed results after the battle. Because if you don't have autosave on, it doesn't save instantly. And inside my video, I was just going back to back because I have autosave on. So at the end of a max raid battle, autosave will save your battle so I can just kind of go straight into the next soft reset. They didn't have and they were like, hey, why is it that after I catch a Pokemon, the beam is still there? And that is the secret to this one. So let me just skip ahead a little bit. So yeah, just pay attention to the top right. After you go through the reward screen, boom. Now saving, like once you get through this, okay, after this screen, when it sends the ditto to the box, now saving in the top right, beam goes away, saving goes away. If I soft reset the game, it's not going to have any negative effects, but people were, were reporting that. So that's what I find so fascinating about this. That's what has me on this one because the pieces were there to figure out how to get results from it. That this is, I would consider this an exploit in the same way that the bottle cap exploit was in Pokemon Sun and Moon. That all you have to do is just clear out the um, lottery and then you replace like the two star lottery and you get a regular bottle cap every time just because of how the spawn tables work. Well, this is pretty much the same. Also, what you want to do, not save, you want to go into options, and then you want to turn off the autosave feature, that way you can kind of make this work, and it does kind of create a really weird contrast as to what you want to do inside the games. Because I've had the autosave feature on the entire time that I've been playing, and I didn't think anything of it. And then there's also people that kind of reject the idea of an autosave feature so hard that the first thing they did was turn it off, even though leaving it on doesn't really have too much detriment to the games. That's why people were getting different results. Now for me, that's been quality of life, because that means I catch a ditto, I immediately reset and then it doesn't change anything about my games so some people have been screwed over by autosave some people have been screwed over by turning off autosave it's just getting all of these weird results and then when we finally get a purple beam we can kind of showcase what's going on here and that's gonna be a purple beam has that like slight delay to the red so what happened now is that i turned off autosave so this is where like all of those mechanics start coming to play I, I don't even think i need to go through this entire battle catch the pokemon and then reset and then show the pokemon still going to be here but this is where the raid battle mechanics come into play. Because no matter what happens from here on out, this is always the same Pokemon. When you throw the wishing piece in, or when the beam spawns naturally, it will always be the same Pokemon. There's nothing you can do to modify it. And then, if I was to get friends in on this battle, it's going to be the same Pokemon, and there's nothing that they can do about it. And that's kind of the secret to this that's been hiding inside of Play in Sight. Because if, you, if you're thinking about it now, now that it's kind of like been realized as a feature that's going inside the games, or now that I'm kind of explaining the differences between the saves and resetting and stuff, if I was to get some friends in here, they catch their Pokemon, and then I don't have autosave on and I just turn it off, the Ditto's going to be here. The same exact Ditto is going to be here, but my friends already caught it and saved their games. So I can re invite my friends back in. That's not a glitch. That's the game performing as is. So calling a glitch is a clickbait lie. Saying that it's like a dupe or some kind of cloning. You're not really cloning any Pokemon, you're just catching the same Pokemon over and over again as the gameplay mechanics have been set up. You know, uh, even setting up for like the purple beam on the Wishing Den, like that's no different than any other soft reset inside game. So this isn't a glitch. This isn't against the rules. This doesn't, this isn't bad. This is completely allowable. However, now we get to talk about if it's beneficial or not. And there are some weird effects, because now there's actually a benefit to turning off 
auto saving. I didn't think there was. I was just like, well, now you just have to save at the end of every battle, so that seems like an inconvenience. But no, what this means is at the end of a battle, you can check the Pokemon you've caught, and then you can determine if you want more people to have that Pokemon, or if you want multiples of that Pokemon, so then you can call up all your friends, or better yet, if you have two Nintendo Switch, if you're if you're in a family, or you bought a Nintendo Switch Lite, and you have two copies, one for Sword, one for Shield, and something like that, then that means you could just local player farm it the entire time. And I think that this only really counts for, like, some Gigantamax Pokemon, because Gigantamax is rare, but it's not, like, impossibly rare. So some Gigantamax Pokemon, and then 6 IV Ditto. Because it does take a little bit of time to set it up, get all of your friends in for every battle, you reset, you go back into it, you get your friends in, etc. And then this is kind of like how it goes. You, you catch the Pokemon, you find it in your boxes. I don't think that's the Ditto we just caught. Give me a second. Yeah, it's this one, because if you do a 3-star raid battle, which was the first Ditto I did, it can be 35 to level 40, and then 4-star is 45 to level 50. So that was the 3-star that I did before, and then this is the 4-star that I'm kind of using for this um, explanation. So what you're looking for are those IVs. Are those good IVs? If yes, then you want to kind of, you know, get, like, you reset the game, call up all your friends, or you get your extra console, and then you just kind of farm that one as much as you want. That's effectively what it is. It's just farming a guaranteed good Pokemon using the mechanics of the game, since everyone re gets that Pokemon. It's always going to be the same since spawn, not since encounter. So that's kind of some weird stuff. And then, if it's bad, you save the game, and you try again. And that's where I feel like the extra step wasn't worth it until this comes into play. But there's no way you can also get anything out of this single player. You need those multiplayer things, you need more people to come in. But there are a few other things going on here. Let's say we get that crazy, insane 6 IV Ditto Den and we're just farming it all day long with friends. Well, eventually that beam is going to expire. That all of the dens reset at midnight. So that's like just kind of the wild area kind of wiping itself clean. So there is going to be a limited time to what you can get out of this, but any amount of six IV dittos from this method is going to be crazy. However, it doesn't mean that there's going to be any more legit dittos being given away or something like that. That I said it in my breeding guide, I said it in my did ditto guide. If anyone offers you a six IV ditto, it is 100% hacked because it is so incredibly rare that, you know, the ditto raid battles take a few minutes to do, getting the wishing pieces, resetting for them takes a while. So, I mean, best case scenario, you're getting 15 rolls an hour with incredibly dedicated play and probably a little less than that. And then the odds of getting that 6 IV ditto are going to be like 1 in a thousand or something. And no one's just going to give away hours and hours, you know, no one's going to give away 50 hours of their time for free, especially when hacking was available before the games came out. And hacking is still like a wide thing. Like if you if you go on and like see anyone selling a ditto and they're claiming it's legit, it's not. There's no such thing as legit 6IV foreign ditto that's just being handed to you for free or even being sold somewhere illegally. And then it's going to be hacked anyway. So it, it's one of the dumbest things I can imagine for someone to actually spend money for a cheated Pokemon and thinking that it, there's actually like some benefit to it. No, if you're, if you're getting a 6IV ditto from someone else, you're like not obtaining it in-game, you can't verify that it came from one of these raids or anything, then you're no better, like, you might as well just be cheating a full team of six Pokemon instead of spending time breeding at that point. So that's what I mean by this. However, it does mean, like, there's, instead of 0.1%, actually not even that, 0.01% of 6 IV dittos being legitimate, it's gonna be, like, 0.03% of 6 IV dittos being legitimate, because finding that raid is still going to be incredibly difficult. And then even if you do find the incredibly rare 6 IV ditto raid, there's really no guarantee to how many dittos you're going to get, uh, how many friends you can have farming it and stuff like that, but it is a really interesting thought, that if you have that raid and you're not saving it, you just like open it up to the internet and you gift people dittos from the raid, which isn't cheating. I never said that every 6 IV ditto is hacked, just the ones that you don't obtain yourself. So if you have this raid, and then you're just having random people come into the ditto spawn, and then they turn around and realize they have a 6 IV ditto, you can give that gift of joy to so many people, and then you can just keep on doing it until the den expires, which is kind of ridiculous to think about. But then it also makes me wonder if there's going to be hacking in that. Like if, there's a, like if it comes out that you can modify the den to spawn a 6 IV ditto, and then you just keep sending that out into the internet, at that point people won't know. So legitimacy in Pokemon is kind of effed at this point because of all the hacking and all of the cheating and just scumbaggery going on. But this 
is a really interesting side effect of just game mechanics that you can utilize for yourself, much like with the uh, bottle caps and anything else like that. Still takes wishing pieces, still takes some kind of setup to get going. I'm guessing like other 5 IV Pokemon, like if you realize you have a perfectly competitive den, you know, you have the right nature, 5 perfect IVs, that's going to be really rare as well, but then, you know, you get your second DS, you get some friends on it, you farm multiples of them, and then you can use that for trading. You just be like, hey, I have a competitive ready Pokemon right here who wants to trade me their competitive ready Pokemon for that competitive ready Pokemon. So yeah, tell me what you guys think down below. I don't think this is going to be like heavily exploitable or anything like that. I think it's just a good thing to keep in mind that if you turn off autosave, you can check your Pokemon, and if it's really good, then you can take action from there about it. And it's just things that we already knew about inside the game from how the games work. So it's some pretty crazy stuff. Either way, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.